Hi everyone, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to cover the new Madrid Fault Zone. I noticed on the 1st there was a magnitude 2.2 earthquake uh, one kilometer east of Parkersburg, Illinois. This was the northern portion of the New Madrid Fault Zone. And five people reported feeling this earthquake. And then today, there was a magnitude 1.4 Wrigley, Tennessee, 6.7 kilometers in depth. And then afterwards, there was a magnitude 1.1, about the same depth, 6.0 kilometers in depth. So that would be about 3.7 miles below sea level. All earthquakes are measured from sea level. And then there was another one, a 1.9 um hamilton mississippi right down there that earthquake was not part of the new madrid seismic zone let me bring this out to these other earthquakes all the little thumbtacks are different earthquakes that i've recorded um here in the past here's the location of wrigley tennessee and i got marked some of these schools um that probably are not the safest place to be in uh, during a major earthquake. I've talked about soft structures. I've talked about unreinforced masonry, etc. So here we have the 1.1, and this is the location of the 1.4. And you guys who follow me know that these white lines here, these are blowholes from um, the earthquake that had occurred back in the 1800s when the sand mixed with water and shot up out of the ground yeah ancient blowholes well not that ancient basically it's a geyser of sand that shoots up from the ground um, during an earthquake anyways it's just an indication that stress is still building along the new madrid fault zone yeah look at all those and i've drawn out in red um, the seismic zones where most of the earthquakes have happened in the past. Yeah, I've used uh, Google Earth to look at how the roads have separated and moved over time. Yeah, you can see right there, there's a crack. It's been 209 years since the major earthquake that occurred in 1811 and 1812. Yeah, 209 years. Uh, geologists believe, and here on the Jackson, uh, Missouri website, they figure that a major earthquake of a magnitude 7.5 or greater happens every two to 300 years. Earthquakes afterwards shook the area for many, many years afterwards. Even Davy Crockett talked about some of the fissures that opened up in uh, one of his books or stories that he wrote, saying that there was a fissure that opened up that he tracked and trapped a bear into. And it's hard to believe that geologists still don't know exactly where the 1811-1812 um, earthquake occurred at. It was such a sparsely populated area. If it was to happen today, um, bridges would collapse, pipelines would yeah, probably explode and fail. Um, the devastation would be tremendous. Remember, church bells all the way in Boston rang when the earthquake occurred. Um, yeah, they had damage over a very large area. The uh, Mississippi River changed its course, um, overflowed its banks. Some areas rose up, others sank down. I've also talked about major earthquakes, how the ground would shake probably for about three minutes back and forth of about six feet. That six feet of shaking would be, you know, every second. Back and forth, back and forth, you'd be shook six feet every second for about three minutes. The East Coast, because of the uh, infrastructures, the major roads going across this area, would be separated for a very long time. Can you imagine what that would do with oil prices, shipments of goods and food? So we are in that window of a major earthquake, a magnitude 7.5 or greater. Are you prepared? I recently added to my survival kit a electronic whistle that sports people often use. It has three different tones that can be charged with a, um, a cord to your computer or to a plug. 
So if some reason uh, you don't have the breath to blow to alert emergency responders you're trapped somewhere, you can press the little button and it puts out a very loud um, whistle. If you're in a structure such as a several story apartment building or a house, it's important to get off your bed in case the roof above you collapses. You don't want to be crushed, suffocated between the ceiling and your mattress. Um, get on the floor beside the bed. You should have shoes next to your bed and a flashlight. And of course, you know, emergency supplies and medical um, type of uh, bandages and things you could help yourself or maybe others in the case of, you know, injuries. When I lived near Klamath Falls, Oregon, on September 20th, 1993, we had a magnitude 6.0 earthquake. My home was probably about 35 miles east of um, that earthquake, if not farther. And FEMA came out to assess damages and ask people if they need water and things like that. I was told that in my small town, um, I was the only one in town that actually had water and I didn't need assistance. I had food and water. I was the only one in my entire town that they met that actually was prepared. I am prepared for, you know, any type of disaster. And I always say I certainly hope I never need to use them. And in that case, yeah, we needed uh, the water because all our water, the wells for the city was all contaminated. My house moved on its foundation. The uh, porch actually separated from the house by about, oh, four to five inches. And then with all the shaking afterwards, it worked its way back to being secure. Not a single coffee cup that I had mounted on little pegs in my kitchen actually fell. And everything was bolted and, um, you know, nailed down just in case. Prior to that, I had never heard of earthquakes in our location. But can you imagine in a town at that time, there was like 350 residents. I was the only one that was prepared and actually had water and did not need FEMA assistance. So are you prepared? Um, if so, put down in what ways you are prepared. Um, and if you're not, yeah, you definitely need to be prepared for some sort of my major disaster, tornadoes, flooding. Yeah, you just don't know. Thank you for watching. Please stay safe and I will talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.